Hi there, can you hear me all right? Excellent. So yes, as introduced, I am going to talk about Moodle and Drupal CMS integration. Before I get started and press spacebar to hit this first slide, I'd just like to point out that I'm not a technician, I'm not a developer. Um, I'm, I can find out for you, but technical questions I probably won't be able to answer on the spot. So, um, although this is a conference about Moodle, um, I think it's worthwhile just covering just briefly what Drupal is for those who don't know. <clears throat> so Drupal is a open source content management system. So essentially that means it's for publishing um, publishing websites um, or an running it as an application. Uh, there's a government agency in New Zealand that's running it uh, as an internal system for tracking uh, inquiries and it's sort of more like a CRM so it's it's very adaptable um, and it, it's it's sold as an out-of-the-box website solution which means essentially if you have it installed then um, a non-technical person like myself can go through and um, using the configuration um, options and administration settings create a website from scratch um, of course, I'd probably need help with making it look really pretty, but there are a lot of inbuilt themes as well that you can download and use to make it really look pretty good. So um, what, that's what. Now why? Why do we want to use Drupal? Well, why do I, why I like using Drupal? Um, part, partly it's open source. Uh, Catalyst, who I work for, is introduced, um, work exclusively with open source software. Um, and uh, so we're a big fan of anything with um, open source and open standards like Drupal. Um, and like I say, you can make it look pretty. Uh, Moodle, Moodle's great, Moodle 2 is even better in terms of, of how you can make it look, but Drupal, you've got a huge range of scope for making it look really, really, really slick. Um, another reason to use Drupal, multiple content types. So you can have blogs, you can have wikis, you can have videos, you can have text, you can have forums, you can have many, many hundreds of, of, of content types essentially on this one site. So you're not limited to you know, just content, just, just text. Uh, like Moodle, it's modular. Uh, you can have the core functionality within Moodle. And then there's, there are tens of thousands of contrib modules out there. Of course, some are better than others, just like in Moodle. Um, you need to install contrib modules with caution. There are security gaps in a lot of the contrib modules out within the Moodle community, and the same within Drupal. However, the Drupal community is massive, um, and it's super active, and they have a dedicated security team reviewing all the contrib modules. And if you've, any of you have signed up to security at drupal.org mailing list, you, almost every week there's a new security announcement and a new contrib, uh, sorry, a new patch to, to install to cover any gaps. Uh, I mentioned before that out of the box solution and um, this dashboard idea, so um, just like Moodle, a non-technical person could administrate a, administrate a website and in Drupal, in particular Drupal 7, which is the latest release of Drupal, there's a very nicely laid out dashboard which at a glance you can see I'm changing the user settings, I'm, I'm changing this block, I'm changing this area of the site. It's very simple to use. Uh, the user management in it is comprehensive and easy to use, again a lot like Moodle. And uh, it has a very granular system of roles and permissions, so you can have administrator, website editor, contributor, facilitator, and then permissions per module at a very granular level um, assigned to each of those users um, <coughs> within whatever context you need. Uh, it has the ability to create multiple taxonomies and, and run multiple taxonomies, so not just limited to tagging, that's additional on top of that. And there are a huge um, array of social networking tools available within it. I mentioned wikis, blog, forums. Um, and there's also the ability to, because of its open standards, um, plug it into to dedicated social networking applications and sites like Facebook and Twitter. Um, <coughs> excuse me, two modules that I'm a particularly big fan of within Drupal are the workflow module and the organics group module. And this allows a huge range of, of activities to be taking place on, the, on these sites. And this is why it is complementary to Moodle, which they don't, while they have groups, 
don't, doesn't so much have this idea of workflow for progressing from point A to point B through a, a set of, of predefined steps. So, <clears throat> um, ideas about Moodle and, and Drupal integration and how it might work. So, uh, as a, as a, I'm a project manager um, and a, a specialist in, in, in Moodle and Mahara and, and Drupal. And I've been on a number of projects where we've integrated Drupal as a front end website or content management system with Moodle sitting in the back end as the learning management system. I um, have a personal preference to use systems to, to how they are designed. Um, a learning management system is not a student management system, it's a learning management system and should be used as thus. So <clears throat> using Drupal for, for content and as website, a website layer, I think is, is a complementary system. And uh, because there is some overlap in functionality, you do need to be a little bit clearer about the purpose of each of those sites. Um, <clears throat> but there's no, no reason why you can't integrate them to, um, in terms of the information that they hold. So, um, and I'll show you some screenshots, and if um, I have interwebs working, then I can do a live demo um, of how you can have a Drupal site with Moodle feeding information about the courses that it holds directly into the Drupal website. Um, based on a regular update, um, like based on cron or even a live update. Um, and the way to do this um, is there's a, a module that was de um, developed by Catalyst um, called MNET um, and that allows for a single sign-on between Drupal and Moodle. So if you have a Drupal front end and a Moodle back end, they come to the website and then they can integrate seamlessly straight into the Moodle site. And you can, can use a consistent um, presentation layer on the top. So before the user knows it, they're in Moodle and they haven't seen any change in the, in the, in the say, the header. Um, obviously, you're still in, using Moodle and you have different tools available to you, but it's a, it's a pretty seamless transition for users. Um, <clears throat> and Moodle can feed back into Moodle using an RSS feed to, to plug the courses in. Um, and like I mentioned, you can have a, sem a regular update or just a regular cron job, because in theory, you know, a nightly update or, or even an hourly update of courses should be sufficient. So possibilities. Um, so if we have a Drupal front end as brochureware for courseware um, sitting in the back. So um, I've got a, an example here that I'll talk about, but we can, you can use Drupal to advertise the courses that you have available, have your course curriculum, um, have links to other um, relevant information. And then when they go to enrol, um, they go to Moodle to actually complete their courses. And uh, Drupal has a module called Ubercart, which allows for um, basically commerce or, or purchase of those courses. You'll still need a payment gateway of some kind, but Ubercart allows you to, to purchase or select and add to a shopping cart courses to, to enrol in, essentially. Another idea is having a standalone website um, or even an intranet um, with Moodle courses just sitting in the background. Um, Wellington College in, in Wellington, um, biggest college in Wellington, um, have, have, have this, this set up. So they just happen to be using Drupal for their website, so they have all of their um, you know, enrol with us, why you should come to the school, sporting events, information about for parents sitting on their, their Drupal site, and then their students have a login to go to their Moodle classes, no, courses on, on Moodle. Um, <clears throat> If, if you didn't want to use the full range of the learning management system functionality available in Moodle, you could have the standalone website with just Moodle using it for the forums, um, maybe for a community of practice, or practices within an organisation. Um, this is more the intranet idea. Uh, for face-to-face -face bookings, so face-to-face -face isn't, um, not everyone will know about the face-to-face -face module, I'm not sure, um, which it just allows you to create courses, within a course you can create sessions, say um, open office training would be a face-to-face -face instance and then you can create sessions within that, so Monday the 1st, Tuesday the 2nd, Wednesday the 3rd, and then people can enrol in those courses or those sessions and um, Moodle will allow you to um, create customised uh, emails to send out to people when they enrol, when they unenrol, when they cancel. Um, the ability to have 
managers get getting um, notification of an enrolment by a staff member if they enrol in the face-to-face -face. and it also tracks attendance so the facilitator for those courses can then go through and go tick tick attended and, and, and assign a grade as well. Um, it's particularly used within the government sector in, in New Zealand for the, those clients that I've worked with. Quizzes, um, it could be for refresher courses within an institution, uh, again thinking more in the government setting than the tertiary. And I've mentioned the communities of practice, all the tools within the learning management system are applicable to a kind of a limited social network. Other ideas, uh, a Drupal hub for and I've put multi-app courseware because I couldn't quite fit it on my spreadsheet, my um, PowerPoint. But the idea of this is you may have courseware that sits in Moodle and other, course, other courseware or learning management systems um, or external links to other resources. And you can use Drupal as a central point for people to log in at and have single sign-on to those various applications or, or websites. Um, again, using Drupal as the hub idea and the single sign-on idea to multiple Moodle instances. So you may be, um, <clears throat> and this is an example that I'm going to show you, where an organisation has different branches, which are separate entities, but still within the one organisation, and they have multiple Moodle instances branded in different ways, but they use their, their Drupal site as essentially brochureware, and then you have a, a hub idea for their Moodle instances. And again, Drupal is a hub for an online learning suite. So uh, the Mahara ePortfolio system, uh, Koha library management system, and just an example, the Turnitin plagiarism detection software, all plugged into Drupal, all single sign-on, and have everything together in that, that one stop shop. Any questions before I push on? Sure. The, the question is how do we manage um, a single sign-on with all these applications and unfortunately that's one of those questions I can't answer. <laughs> I can certainly find out for you though. Um, there, um, yeah, it's probably a mix of LDAP, Active Directory, but I'll need to talk with the, with the gigs. Sorry. Anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, Yes. <laughs> no, turn it, the question is uh, turn it in around turn it in and what that application does. Yeah, um, I'm, I, I don't know intimately, but I know that turn it in is a system that's um, uh, where you can submit assessments or assessments that have been submitted. You submit to them, and they run it through some sort of algorithm to check to see whether that information has been used before. And there is a plug-in that um, uh, certainly one of our, our staff members, Dan Marsden, from Catalyst, has been working on particularly to, to plug that directly into Drupal. How it works um, in terms of technical, again, I can't, can't answer, but I can certainly find out for you. No, we just wrote the integration between Moodle and Turnitin. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Google for the win. Right. Um, <coughs> I mentioned before that Drupal has, with it being open standards, um, plugs in nicely to other applications like Facebook, like MySpace, like Twitter. Um, I was um, lucky enough to be working on the um, the, a Greenpeace project um, for the sign-on campaign, which was around the Copenhagen Climate Summit. And New Zealand Greenpeace had a, um, and I don't know if that ran internationally, I know there was an Indian instance, um, where there was this big sign-on campaign to sign a um, petition to try and get our Prime Minister, John Key, to, to go to this Copenhagen Summit and participate. And certain, I mean, we were aiming for a certain number of um, signatures. And they were using things like Facebook and Twitter to try and get more people to sign on coming from Facebook into the Drupal site which was running sign on um, and eventually <coughs> the plan was um, you know reuse that that site for other 
um, petitions and other um, events outside of the, the sign-on campaign um, and use Ubercart to have a, like a reward system of points. So if you signed on and you referred someone else that signed on, you could earn a certain number of points and then redeem those points for T-shirts or bookmarks, that sort of thing. But getting people pulling into your site from these social network sites and then getting them out to wherever you need them to go is a perfect example of how to use Drupal. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned the, the workflow idea and the, the workflow module and this allows for a like, collaborative authoring environment within Drupal. So you can, I talked about how you can get from point A to point B through a, a series of predefined steps. That Those steps can be um, website or uh, facilitator um, submits file, web editor reviews it, submits it to an administrator who publishes it. I mean, that's very simple and, and fairly convoluted in terms of actually publishing, but you can have it so you have multiple authors or um, people who need to provide permission to, to publish something or peer review, and you can have those steps set out. Um, and it can all be quite automated without having to have website administrators press the button. It could be as long as it goes through these steps, it'll be published, and we know that what is published has been peer reviewed and is an example of best practice for whatever reason. Um, <clears throat> and it's not just content within Drupal, of course. You can have these, this workflow associated with developing courseware in Moodle. So um, one um, current limit of, of Moodle is this whole collaborative authoring. We have a course, content, a co course um, with content in it um, but we don't really know for sure if someone else is working on it and where they're at to it um, without having an annotation in it. So using this step-by-step, -step, even a check-in, check-out system can, can really enhance your courseware development processes. Um, I talked about the, the Drupal Hub for multiple Moodle instances. Um, again, this is the Accent model, which I'm going to show, and the um, multi-app courseware. I'm laboring the point here. I'm excited about it. <laughs> So, examples, and I've taken screenshots partly because I can't log into some of these sites from here without privacy con um, issues, um, but, and, and partly because I'm not always confident about um, uh, having internet access at technical um, conferences. <coughs> um, so, TWOR, which stands for Tawangana Urokawa, and uh, Wananga um, is a little like a polytechnic in, in its model, but um, they focus on on a different way to teach. Um, but you can see from the screenshots here, they have a front page, which is that, that, that back uh, screenshot, which has you know all the information about who they are, their courses, scholarships, how to enrol, contact us. This is their brochureware, and then um, you can see dur duration. Um, one full full time or two years part time, and then they can go into Moodle, and the courses is there. Now they're still in the um, piloting staging phase, which is another reason why I can't log and show you at this point. But this is this is the model that they they're adopting. So one two our courses, and Accent. Now this is the one I, I've been hinting at, <coughs> where they have uh, different brands of the same from the same organisation sort of subsidiary organisations and they have um, Moodle applications off these. So Accent is run by the Victoria University of Wellington and uh, well it's a subsidiary of, <laughs> of Victoria University and then they have subsidiaries called School Support, Alto, Lands and the International <laughs> Student. So it's quite a convoluted relationship but so they put it all together on this Accent website and along the top of the screen you see there's navigation and they have it colour coded so when they're on Accent they're grey, when they're in School Support it's green um, and Alto is red. <clears throat> and they have links to Moodle um, for those organisations or subsidiaries using Moodle off that site. So, for instance, um, school support use Moodle, iLands don't, Alto do. So Alto's red and we go straight to their Moodle site and they're using it in different ways. And there's that consistent branding but they can still have their own use of Moodle and have the tools that they want to use and the functionality that's applicable to you know, teaching English as a second language. To, within their Moodle site without having to change quarter categories and confuse students. And um, 
this might be familiar to someone, some people from this morning, but there's also the Moodles in Schools project, which um, <clears throat> kind of got us going on the whole Drupal Moodle integration idea. And what this is, is uh, the Ministry of Education and Catalyst work together to create a community site for primary and secondary school teachers using Moodle or thinking about using Moodle or even just con wondering what Moodle is and why everyone's talking about it in, in, a, in a Drupal site and then having a primary and secondary school version of Moodle, um, just a slightly tweaked version of Moodle applicable to school students and school teachers and linking samples of courses and course material from this Drupal, Drupal site and um, <coughs> to the link here and a demonstration of, of how um, we have adapted Moodle to be more primary focused and secondary focused because currently and I'm sure most people will agree it's more tertiary focused that was how it was designed and this allows for a single sign on once you register on the community site you've got to log in directly to both the sample courses and the demo of the school's version of, of Moodle as well as access to all of the information about um, the community which is, is really just a place to share resources, share thoughts, um, find out how to get support. There's a directory <coughs> excuse me, of all of those students, uh, sorry, schools that have registered on the site. Once you register your school can go up onto a directory listing so you can say hey uh, I'm, in, I'm in the Wellington area and so is this school, they're using Moodle, I might go see them, um, and, and forums. And you see that the, the images and the, and the presentation layer is, is much the same but we, we are now in Moodle from Drupal um, and we're in the sample courses side. So I've rushed through that I think. Oh no, I'm going pretty well for time actually. Um, questions, comments, any other ideas that people have got around integrating Drupal and Moodle? Right at the back. Um, you can run it a couple of different ways. What we did with Moodles and Schools is um, once you register on the Moodles and Schools Drupal site, an account is automatically created for you on Moodle. But I'm sure you could do it the other way around and then you can have permissions assi assigned to the users and consistency there. So there's lots of different ways of doing it. Sorry, um, did anyone hear that question? I was supposed to repeat it back. <laughs> Next question. Down the front. Okay. So this is a quick recommendation if you're actually running. It's a good, respectable module. It's not one of those. <laughs> the dodgy controls. <laughs> <laughs> but, but my question was actually about what you were saying, permissions, uh, and uh, what level of, because that's one of the things we're dealing with right now, what sort of level of granularity can you get? So when you sign up in, on Drupal, you're part of the group, does it make you automatically have access to certain courses on Google as a student or a teacher? Right, the questions around permissions and, and the granularity, I've stopped being able to say that word, um, roles within, within Drupal and, and, and how detailed you can get down there to, between Drupal and, and Moodle. Yeah. Um, and groups is a bit tricky. Do you mean groups within Drupal or groups well, within Moodle? Yeah, the permissions within Drupal around organic groups sits within the organics group module rather than Drupal itself so you can get quite detailed um, quite granular around how that works within particularly around workflow um, there's a website uh, that I again worked on called Ako Aotearoa um, which is a site for um, publishing and, and distributing examples of best practice in tertiary education and they use Drupal um, they don't use Moodle at this point um, but um, They've, they're using organic groups and this workflow idea. So they've got website administrators and people that can create groups within Drupal. Um, and then within the organics group, they say who can be a group owner, who can be a publisher, who can be a reviewer. Um, to answer your question around groups within Moodle, you could probably cr cross-pollinate a little bit, but I think the structures are slightly different about how groups work within Moodle and how groups work within Drupal. So 
yeah, I, I don't really know if I'm answering your question. Um, everything is possible with open source, but I think it, you could get quite complicated pretty quick with that. That, yeah. Anyway, any further questions? Hey. Uh, Moodle's in schools, um, we're just in um, beta for um, running 2.0 on that site, um, but there's, it's been in 1.9 at this point. Um, you know, as Moodle partners and, and contributors to Moodle 2.0, Catalyst still um, don't jump straight into new new versions, you know, we want to work carefully with our clients, so um, we haven't, I, I personally haven't done Drupal Moodle 2.0 implementations, but I'm sure they have been out there. Anyone else? These lights are bright. Okay, well I'm with four minutes early. Oh, uh, so, sorry, no, no, stretch out my time. Yeah. How about, uh, have you worked in Drupal distributions? Because I'm thinking right now, the Drupal Commons from Acquia is a great Yeah, we've worked with Acquia. Or, but the universities, the Drupal Scholar, the Harvard, have put together a Drupal Publisher, or you know, some of these things. Yeah. Different, the questions around different uh, Drupal distributions. Done a little bit of work with Acquia, um, but uh, because um, certainly when I was looking after the Drupal team back in New Zealand, um, we were using the same modules over and over again, so we kind of built our own distribution locally um, and based it on Aquila, a, a Aquila yeah? and um, then added our own bits and pieces in the, and, and the, um, s some modules that we like to use. So, yes and no. <laughs> Again, <laughs> you ask the hard questions. Don't don't talk to this one. <laughs> yes. I caught some of that. Someone. <laughs> it could be the accent thing. Can you repeat the question, please? A list list of modules we recommend. Um, uh, I could get you one. I, don't, I couldn't rat rattle them all off, um, but certainly um, Ubercat, great. Workflow, organic groups, profile installer. Yeah, oh, see me after. <laughs> so that was a list of, of the, the kind of contra modules that we, security, give the tick to and, and like to use. All right, well, thank you very much. Oh, no, one more. That could be MNET, the, the long name for MNET, yeah. Yeah, middle integration. Um, might not be, but I'll find out. Is it separate? Okay. Has anyone got any other ideas for how to, to mer you know, integrate Moodle, or have they an experience in integrating Drupal and Moodle? Yep, there. <laughs> excellent. What <Watch> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for your time and attention. If you have any questions, I'm around.